see so many people through her wedding. And I'm sure you all agree it is a fantastic exhibition. When I was travelling down here today, uh, my son had one of them fancy phones. And so I says to him, do you look and see if you can Google some, see if you can find any jokes or any quotations about artists. And you'd be pleased to know I'm not going to tell you the jokes. <laughs> but I was taken by one of the comments, one of the quotations, and it was Van Gogh who said, What greater gift could an artist have other than to love people? Oh. And I think that's one thing you can say about David. He loved people. And I think that's a testament to that, the amount of people I've actually attended here today. Uh, I suppose I'm, I should start by saying this is an opening ex exhibition and the launch of a book. I <coughs> remind you all that the books are on sale at the front desk, very quickly. So if you want to buy early Christmas presents, <laughs> now is the time to do it. Now it takes, a, it takes a lot of people to get the book and the exhibition together. And um, sort of uh, far too many of them to thank, I think of thank them all, I hope of thank them all, uh, but too many to. So thanks a lot to all of them, I think we know who they are. I'd like to say a special mention to, first of all, Ken Sedman and Phil Fargo from the Dom Museum, who had the foresight to uh, allocate this space for us to have an exhibition of the other's works when others were not willing to sort of, uh, do it. So I think we should all see yeah, it. Yeah. 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 Um, when I started this, this, and we decided we were going to have an exhibition that's going to last nine months, <coughs> it's, going, it's going to be really difficult <coughs> to get people to let us have pictures for that length of time. But everybody with the approach has been absolutely fantastic. No question about everyone was willing. And I'm sure that <coughs> all those that we haven't even been able to include every piece of David's work, obviously, I'm sure everybody else who owns David's work would have been exactly the same. Because that's the kind of relationship that we had with people. And this exhibition today, it's a, it's a tribute the celebration of the life and work of David Mulholland. We're also sort of um, see it as a celebration of um, the uh, the culture of this area, and especially of South Bank, where which had a major role in shaping David and shaping me, and in the shaping the, the other two people who are going to be saying something about David today. So, without any more ado from me, it's sort of a, like sort of a um, Len to say something. It's Len Tavner, another sort of a <coughs> very well-known artist and um, a classmate of David, which is Tommy Spitz. Can you all come a bit nearer? Because there's a lot of people coming. There's loads of room. Just come forward a bit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to all come through? <laughs> oh, you still come a bit nearer. Eh? Bro, come on. Does anybody want to go any nearer? 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 Anybody want to go I just want to say a little bit about the beginning. Four or five weeks ago, the beginning of September, or I should say 54 years and four or five weeks ago, from the beginning of September, I think it was the 3rd of September, but it might have been the 5th of September, I started a new school. Grey flannel shirt, tie, grey short trousers, long stockings, itchy, <laughs> You know, new school, first term, first day, in the playground, this lad walks up to me with black curly hair. He said, what's your name? I looked. 
didn't wait for an answer. He said, I'm David Morland. Everybody called me Monty. I'm going to be an artist when I leave school. <laughs> just like that. And he walked off. <laughs> you know, I looked at him. He just walked off. Like a young cockerel. Thought he can't be an artist. <laughs> you know, he did. Well, I, he'd been at Cromwell Road Infant or Junior School, which is a bit posher. I'd been at Princess Street. So I'd never met him <coughs> before. But we were soon in the art room all, all the time together. First of all, with a chap called Mr. Baxter. Well, I think he'd been in the Indian Army. He'd had a, a moustache and he drove a big, big Bentley with a leather strap over the bonnet. All the lads used to take the mech out of him and that's why he didn't get a proper car. And after that, <laughs> we had Mr. Dalton. Now, we'd all heard of Mr. Dalton before we went to Victoria Street. Dickie Dalton. Now, I never said it. Jimmy Beasley said it. We all knew before we went, he was a bit of a tyrant. He used to have a cane, evidently, standing by his desk in a jar of vinegar, so it stung more. <laughs> <laughs> he caned everybody all the time. Anyway, that's what we were told. Anyway, wasn't very long before we had Mr. Dalton. Top and bottom of it was, Dave and myself were nearly always in Mr. Dalton's art room. We didn't do much else. He used to give us a chit in the morning, and we'd take it round to the other teachers. Well, there's about 48 people in the class, 48 kids in the class, all boys. So they're glad to get rid of two. So they signed us off. And then Mr. Dalton, Toss H, he used to sign our reports, Toss H Dalton. He used to let us go off for the day, drawing on our bikes, up the hills, Smith Stock, up the allotments, flat lane brickworks. He used to say, go and draw chimneys. So we spend all day drawing chimneys. Go and draw allotments, go and draw windows, go and draw telegraph poles. Each day you had to go and look at something different and fill pages. Anyway, we were all the time drawing around South Bank. <coughs> and he was strict. He didn't speak in Mr. Dalton's classes unless he was spoken to. If he said you could put your name on a piece of work, name and the date, you knew we'd done it all right. He never said that's okay. He never said, that's a good piece of work. He said, put your job number on and your name. He, that was a compliment. <laughs> anyway, if, if, just in case anybody is here, in, a, in my class, and they got thrashed by Mr. Dalton, when they're at school, he's over there. Is he? I warned you. I'll warn you now, if you want to fill him in, <laughs> and, and Tom, if you want Jimmy, I'll we'll call you a tyrant. It wasn't me, he's over there. <laughs> anyway, we were always in the art room together, always going off doing things. Usually, we'd go to school and he'd let us go off for the day. We'd go up the hills or down the docks or climb under the fence at the ironwork and draw. And we'd go back about half past three and stay <coughs> in the art room till about five o'clock, six o'clock time. Then there'd be art club in the evening. Well, this went <coughs> on and on. And then Dave got into the art club. I went off to Western Grammar School for a while. And we used to go off on our, on our bikes together. But wherever we went, up the hills, Commondale, Castleton, Breakwater, Dave used to sit and draw South Bank. <laughs> <laughs> After a while, we, we, he'd had a year, a couple of, for three years, I think, at Middlesbrough, and I had a year at Middlesbrough, and he went on to buy and show in London, and I went to Caution Court, Bath Academy of Art. Well, we decided to go to Cornwall painting, so we hitchhiked down to Cornwall. February, horrible weather, the camping, team down all the time. So we, we got into a little bed and breakfast, and I'd go out drawing. Dave found the working men's club. <laughs> <laughs> he liked to paint. <laughs> and he'd sit in the working men's club in St. Ives, drawing. South Bank. I'd go drawing in mine. <laughs> um, I think it was 1966, 
we decided to hitchhike to France. I, I remember going to Paris. And we, we, sold, we only took ten pound each. I went for a month. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we had, we had a, a ticket, student aeroplane ticket, to fly London to Paris. Well, the reality of it was, you got on a bus at Victoria Street bus station, and it took you down to somewhere like Folkestone. And we got into this aeroplane, it was a DC-3. And it went <coughs> along the runway and stopped. And it taxied off, it went along the runway again and stopped. After about half an hour of doing this, they asked us to get out. And we got into another aeroplane. And that one got off the ground, and we got over the other side, and just on the other side of the sand hill, we landed in the field. I went to wait for them to get the sheep out of the field. <laughs> <laughs> we hitchhiked to Paris and we stayed in a youth hostel. Anyway, I remember going round the Louvre with Dave and he struts round rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> rubbish. And nothing pleased him until we came up there. An enormous painting, about 30 foot wide, 12 foot high, and there's a coronation of Napoleon by David. And he got down on his arms and knees. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Anyway, we, we hitchhiked down to Exxon Province, where we ended up, well, we were going to Cezanne's studio, but we got put in jail. <laughs> I won't say that. <laughs> but, if it, oh, it stank. <laughs> we were in this, we were underground. This fella, he, he took all our gear off us, and he took us along this passage, and he opened this door, and he led us. Let us start, slammed it and bolted it and locked it, found <coughs> another passage, a little, a little window in the door with bars on it, and he shoved us in there, and he just, you know, left us there, it was dark, and in the gloom, you could see about 15 beds with drunken Frenchmen, <laughs> and, and every now and again, they'd get, we're underground, we'd slip one little flickering light, he'd get, one of them would get up and they'd start to fight, and, and so, anyway, we, we, we carried, we, they let us out eventually, we went to Cezanne studio, Dave tried all Cezanne's jacket on and got his brushes out. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went down onto the coast and we went along the coast into Italy. And I was going off drawing. And Dave was sat drawing, South Bank. <laughs> <laughs> all the time I saw the drill. Anyway, we, I, I remember once we, we got, we, we tried into Germany on the way back. We were getting dark, we were on an autobahn, couldn't, couldn't get a lift. So Dave said, let's get over this fence, there's some fields over there. So we got over the fence, walked over the field, a piece of grass. We didn't have a tent, but we had sleeping bags and covers. So we lay out. First thing in the morning, we looked round. I know the films of the German concentration camps, these towers all the way around. With Look, the black is looking at them. We're on the airfield. A <laughs> couple of minutes later, the great big chief comes up, in, you know, all in German, he told us to get in the back, and it was, give it a good drill, and they dropped us off miles away in the motorway. Anyway, we eventually we got to the border, Strasbourg, I think. We wouldn't, weren't going to let us back into France, and De Gaulle didn't like down in that way. We weren't, you know, we were respectable. <laughs> and they asked how much money we had, which is about four and six. <laughs> <laughs> but we had our tickets back, the other half of our return tickets, so we did get, we did get, we did get back. Um, and there was another time we hitchhiked to, to the Lake District. Well. We were a bit late setting off, we only got as far as Barnet Castle. So we said we'll go to Barnet, to Boar's Museum. Well, we went to the board because it was shut, it was dark. So we found a nice bit of grass to put our tent up. <laughs> we went and got some fish and chips, and uh, the woman said, Where are you stopping? And Dave said, Big house up there, and in the garden. <laughs> anyway, I had a good night's sleep, but about half past eight in the morning, I had a little stove going, <laughs> cooking bacon and eggs. <laughs> As Dave's still in bed, and, and this chap comes round, What are you doing here? And we looked, and it was all in that parterre, you know, right in the front of the board museum. He said, Right, I'm calling the police. Out now, out now. <laughs> I said, we'll only be ten minutes, we'll finish cooking our bacon. <laughs> so we worked it out that by the time he got the police, we had finished our bacon, which we did. He, he, he did they didn't actually come, but uh, 
It, w it was a bit of a near thing. Anyway, as, as far as I know, Dave spent three years at Barham Shaw and three years at Royal College of Art. And all he did was paint South Bank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say a lot more, but he, he was a man of enormous spirit. He was very interested in a number of things. A lot of things didn't interest him at all. He was interested in drawing and painting. And at school, he was interested in football. Right? The other thing he liked was his fags. And I think Jimmy said this exactly when you were five, didn't you, Jimmy? And he liked his beer. I don't know a lot about drinking, but I know Dave was very committed when he didn't drink. <laughs> Graham said, Graham Smith said, there's not enough said in the book about Gra Dave's drinking. I said, what can you say, Dave? And Graham said, well, it's part, of, it's part of his culture, part of his upbringing. So if anyone wants to know about the drinking, ask Graham. Graham <laughs> but there's one thing. <coughs> Towards the end, and as you know, Dave had got very ill. I went to see my doctor, who was also David's doctor. I had to talk about him. And I said, don't you think it would be better not drinking? He said, lad, he said, he'd be better drinking himself into oblivion. But he won't. He's a fighter. He said, if he'd just drunk and drunk and drunk, he'd be better for it. But he won't. Because he had this spirit, he was going to fight. And it was so strong, and he was so optimistic, that three weeks before he died, he applied for a new passport. Oh. Oh. Now whether he was going to use a passport to go away, go abroad, or whether he, he thought he needed it to get up there, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but there's his passport which came three weeks before he died, a new passport. Now I'm going to hand it over to, to, to Vin. <laughs> I'm starting with a little bit of a handicap here. Mm -hmm. I flew in from Ibiza four nights ago. This here popped. This one didn't. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever sung deaf on one side. <laughs> without a PA system. With what musicians would call acoustic barriers all around. <laughs> so we'll cope with this. Anyway. I know the South Bank, eh? I'm not that bad, you know. Oh, it's okay. You've got a sign. Yeah, when I, when I was a kid, I think Len and, and uh, David were about a year older than they are, six months, something like that. Didn't know them as kids. I do remember them individually, walking around South Bank. And, uh, and of course, David was uh, my brother-in-law, twice. <laughs> <laughs> so, got to know him well over the years, and he was a, he was a, he was a generous man. The, the drink didn't do him any, any flavors at all, I presume. He was a generous man, and, and loved. He's a, a song. So Slaggy Island, how South Bank would go, if you're not familiar with South Bank, I'm sure you all know. It's just written because it's called Slaggy Island because of the slag tips that David liked to paint when he was in, at the Vatican. <laughs> <laughs> Getting his passport. <laughs> There's a line in this song, uh, this is written about 1970, I think. And there's a line in the song, uh, when they were demolishing the old part of South Bank where we were all born, <coughs> I was convinced they were going to put lots of flats up. I think David was as well. Yeah, unfortunately, we have to the houses don't put the flats down. Farewell, farewell, and your pride. 
light has turned into decay. All of your sons, they have deserted you. So now you must You have lived as you died. Your birth meant life to many men. You tried red buckle horn and the engine of steam. Now they have gone and you're alone again. So slaggy I Farewell, farewell to thee. Your pride has turned into decay. All of your souls may now be deserted you. So now you must return to the day. When I was your streets I did laugh and play In Coral Connaught, Pearl Street too Your walls, they sheltered me from the wind and the rain But now that hour is all that's left you So snuggy island Farewell, farewell to thee. Your pride has turned into decay. All of your sons, they have deserted you. Now it is your turn to say goodbye. The social life you built, it will die with you. When windowed mountains take the sun from your sky, so slaggy island, farewell. Pride has turned into decay. All of your sons, they have deserted you. So now you must return. Home.